Okay, so with everything that I do and everything that I do daily on my homestead, one of the main things that I am a little behind on is my seed saving. And that's because I just haven't taken the time to get it done. And I gotta start today because like these poor little eggplants are getting really kind of gross and I need the seeds before they go bad and the seeds rot. But I wanna talk to you about seed saving and why I think it's important. If you follow my channel or you've seen any of my other videos about seed saving, it is the most important thing you can do besides growing a garden. You're buying one packet of seed, you're growing those seeds, producing more fruit, and then you're getting more seed from that. So you don't have to continuously buy packets. Now there are a lot of shortages out there, but you can't continue to grow your gardens unless you can learn how to save seed. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a variety of stuff that I have going on today, and hopefully this helps you guys learn. Now I do wanna put in there real quick, if you think about what the shortages this year when it came to seeds and plants, the bad part is, is that that's gonna happen again next year. And what my whole perspective of that is, is that there are people that are very greedy. If you guys saw the news stories that came out over the guy who drove across like three or four states just to get hand sanitizer to then jack the price up and sell it really high, yeah, well, that's not good. <laughs> the feds came in and took it all, and that was great. But that's the type of people we have in our world. So what happens is you're going to have those people next year when the seeds start to come back out in the stores, the first thing they're going to do is go run and grab seeds. And they're going to jack the prices up and you're going to have to pay a lot more money and it's just going to be really hard to deal with. I'm not going to spend $20 on a pack of seeds. I haven't even bought seeds for years. I bought two packs this year and that was for chamomile and lemon balm and I didn't even plant them. I didn't get time. So a lot of my seed collection comes from all natural, just seeds. Now this is a tigger melon. It's a ripe one. It's actually edible at this point, but I isolated this plant to be able to only have tigger melon seeds. So what I like to do is get myself a good jar. I don't use my mason jars for things unless I'm canning in them. So I save all the other jars that come through, um, hamburger pickles, you know, things like, that. I just save those jars and reuse them. So I've got my jars ready and I've sliced this melon in half. I'm going to go ahead and slice the other ones and get those prepared. And then we're going to grab a spoon and we're going to talk about fermenting. There are lots of different types of seeds that you can save from your gardens. Uh, fermenting is one of the main ways that you're going to have to go. Now this one's gotten a split in it. It's not going to be edible, but there's a ton of seeds in here and that's what makes me happy. So let me grab a spoon we'll keep talking. Okay, so... Fermenting seeds, what does that actually mean? You're looking at tomatoes, melons, cucumbers, and squash. They work really well when they're fermented. They have these thick gel around them. You don't have to ferment melons and cucumbers and um, squash seeds as long as you do tomatoes because tomatoes are encased in gel. But basically, all of these seeds have all this stuff around them and you need to get that away. And so instead of just like rinsing them in a colander, I like to ferment mine. All I do is I slice my melons and I come through and I just scoop the seeds out. Just take your time because you don't want big messes, but just scoop all your seeds out and put them into the jar. And then I like to flip my melons over because there's still a bunch down here that I didn't see from the top. You can use a funnel if you prefer, but I'm just so used to doing it this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill this jar with all of these melons, and I'm gonna set these to the side because these can be eaten, not the rotten one, and then I can feed whatever's left over to my chickens and ducks. So let me get this all scooped and we'll talk about the next part. And what I'm gonna do, you can see how many seeds are in here now, is I'm gonna fill this jar about two thirds full, but I'm rinsing down the inside all the way around because I have seeds stuck and I want to get those down into the water. So we're going to fill this up real quick and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, water's in the jar. Reason why you use water and cold water only is because it's going to help all of these loosen away from that veining system where the seeds grew from. So I just tighten my lid and swirl. And I just continuously do this until you can see all those seeds are separated even more now. Lots and lots of seeds. I set this on my counter for 24 hours. 
but I come through anytime I walk in my kitchen and I swirl the jar. And so what's going to happen, like I did some cucumbers the other day, what's going to happen is all those seeds, when you swirl them, you're going to separate and as it settles, all the good viable seeds will go towards the bottom and all the bad stuff towards the top. And you can scoop that out and that way you know it's not a good seed. I mean, this one's a little murky because it's been fermenting, but you can see all those seeds in the bottom. That's all the good stuff. All this stuff on the top, it's not good viable seed. So I'm gonna scoop that out and then we're gonna pour this into a colander and I'll show you the easiest way to go ahead and save those. Okay, so I skimmed off as much of the top as I could. So now I just have all the seeds in the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pour that into my colander in my sink. And you'll know when your seeds are very good and viable because they're gonna be very thick. If they're thin and kind of papery, there's nothing to the insides and those won't grow for you. Until I get all the seeds out the jar, I'll just keep adding water and keep pouring. Double check and my jar is pretty much empty now, so I don't need it. And now I'm gonna look at this colander completely full of seeds. And these are all cucumber seeds. So what I like to do is give them a really good rinse. Moving my fingers through them to try to wash off all that fermented stuff and all the extra gunk that could be left in there. You'll see it, it'll stick to the mesh, or it'll float to the top. And you just want to make sure they're good, clean seeds. So, with that being said, that's how I ferment my seeds. And again, I do it with squash, cucumber, melon, and tomato seeds. You can get these colanders pretty cheap. I've even seen them at the dollar store, so I would recommend getting one. And then what I do is I just have a coffee filter. And I label it with what I'm putting on. And I just basically lay this on my counter and flip this over the top and dump all those seeds on. So you'll hear a clunk and then I'll show you. Okay, so see, I've dumped them onto my filter. The filter is going to absorb all the water that's left into them and they're going to dry out pretty well. But I like to come through and spread them all across as much as possible so that they can dry evenly. Now, if you have a lot of seeds that you're saving at once and you're doing multiple different little batches, make sure everything is labeled. Get yourself a nice pan or a paper towel um, or a towel itself and lay down on the pan and then add these on top. That way it's easier to move. But fermenting your seeds is what you have to do for a lot of these that have the membranes. And in fact, I've got some gherkin seeds in here I need to do next. I think there's a lot of gherkin seeds. So make sure everything's labeled so you know how it goes. Let me show you what to do with your eggplants because that's one of the hardest seeds to save in my opinion. So I've always struggled with how to figure out how to do eggplant seeds and I had a vintage book I found and I went and I bought it and got it shipped here and then realized how easy it was to save them. This is just a really ugly looking eggplant but it was a black beauty and I let it go too far. I'm not gonna waste it. But what I do is I get a cheese grater and I get a bowl of water. And I do this on a cutting board so it's not as messy. And you wanna use your smaller grating setting. Don't worry, it will not harm the seeds, I promise. But you're basically going to take your eggplant and you're gonna grate it like cheese. Now it is a little tough to start with, but I'm gonna just keep grating until I get to the seed in the middle. All right, so you can see all those seeds starting to appear. Now you could just pull this apart and scoop those all out on your own if you want to. I mean, that's quite a bit, but I'm telling you, this is so much easier. So I'm just gonna grate this all the way down. Okay, I grated down as much as I could and there's still some seed in here, so I'm just gonna use my thumbnail and pull those out. And now, you see that big blob? I gotta scrape this all out because I want all those good seeds. And I'm going to make sure I get as much off of my cheese grater as possible. And no, they do not get damaged with the cheese grater. They just fall right through the holes. All right. And then what I do is I pick this all up and add it to my bowl of water. Okay. So I've put all this into the bowl of water. I like to give it a very good stir with my hands to make sure it's loosened off of all that pulp. 
and then let it settle. What's going to happen is the seeds are going to go to the bottom because they're heavier and all the pulp's going to come back to the top. So after about two minutes, it should be settled where I need to and I'll show you what to do. Okay, so it settled some and now what I'm doing is I'm just going to gently pour so that the rest of that pulp drains off into my sink. And I'm watching the water line because I can see all the seeds are right down in here. And I'm just watching till they start to get towards the edge because I don't want to pour those out. All right, so you can see that's what I have now. Gotta add more water. You have to continuously do this and eventually it's gonna go completely clear and just be seeds. See what I mean when I say it starts to go clear? You can actually see the seeds in the very bottom. So I'm going to give this another drain and hopefully we are done with the seeds. Yep, look at that. It's just all seed now. So I go ahead and I give it one final rinse to make sure all my seeds are in the bottom. I'm going to clean my sink out real quick and then we're going to strain these off. All right, and now I'm just going to pour this into my colander. And look at all those seeds I got. And then this is going to go onto a filter that is labeled as well as the Black Beauty eggplants. And I'm good to go with those. Okay, so I just want to talk to you for a minute while I'm getting this squash ready. Um, like I said, I'm behind, so I've got a lot of seeds to save. Whenever you're looking to seed save on your own, do a little bit of research first just to make sure that your item is mature enough. You cannot save things from an immature plant or an immature fruit. You have to have things that have just let that seed grow. Now, that's the unfortunate part of when it happens to be for squash. You will cut through them. It's so hard to not. But if I cut this down the middle and I peel all this back, I still have viable seed inside. So all I have to do is clean all these seeds out and I put those into the jar and I ferment those as well. And then that way I can get all this gunk off the outside because that rots your seed. But yeah, I can show you real quick. Any of them that are already broken, I just go ahead and remove. But all I do is just give this a good twist and they start to pop out. And so I have good viable seeds. And this was a 49er squash. I actually enjoyed it. Um, it's a cross between like a zucchini and a yellow squash. But it was firmer and it, I don't know, sweeter almost. So I wanted to get more seeds to grow this next year. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to save a bunch of seeds today. All of these, like I said, for fermenting will sit for 24 hours. Except for tomato seeds. They need at least three days. You'll be able to tell when you start to look into the seeds. If they look like they're really slimy and covered in that membrane, then they're not ready. So just give them an extra day or two and just keep an eye on them. But yeah, that's not bad for just one little save. I got quite a bit of seeds. I mean, that's a good 15 plants that I can grow just from that. So I'm gonna continue to save these. I've got a lot more to do. I actually have a ton of seeds to save. All your other seeds are really pretty standard. Uh, pepper seeds, those are banana peppers. You want to make sure that they go completely ripe and you just cut your end off and there's all your seed right in the inside. And all you have to do is pop all those out and put them on a filter and let them dry for a couple days. And then that way you have good dry seed. Now never pack your seeds away when they're wet and never pack your seeds away when they have residue still in there because like I said, that will mold them. So everything has to be very nice and clean and almost like sterile in a sense. Um, you're putting those away for storage. You don't want to waste them. So I'm going to get back to saving seeds. I hope this helped you guys learn a little bit. Again, just one of those things that I am like very adamant about. I love to save seed. And the reason being is because I've already put my money in the plant and I don't want to keep doing that. So... Take what you've learned from me and look at what you have still going in your gardens and let those squash get a little big. Let those 
tomatoes get really ripe. Let, let those things turn the colors that nature intended them to be and go ahead and pull them and you really only need one or two to get enough seed for the next year. Seriously, I can show you some examples real quick just so you understand. Okay, ignore the mess on my table. It's usually like this all the time, but that was four cucumbers. Uh, the rest of them I didn't like the way the seeds looked. That was one, no, that was three long eggplants. And then this one came from a piece of an eggplant that was left over when I was cooking dinner. But then you can look, pepper seeds, pepper seeds, pepper seeds, pepper seeds, pepper seeds. You get quite a bit from what you do. And so it is worth saving your own seed. All right, so again, I'm just going to get in here and get these seeds saved so that I can move on with my day because I have all kinds of stuff to do. But thank you guys for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I do a lot of stuff where it comes to homesteading, recipes, and seed saving and gardening. And so maybe you can learn something from me.